Hi, boys and girls. Miss Kathy here from Shaler North Hills Library, and we are starting our STEAM program featuring various famous people in a short story about them and then accompanying activities. So the first one we are doing is called Six Dots. It's a story of young Lewis Braille, and Braille is a system of writing that is used by blind people. If you don't know that, you are going to learn about it and about his life. It says, because he was French, there's a pronunciation guide in the front of the French words, names, and phrases used in the text. I know no Fran French, and I'm probably going to pronounce some of these names wrong because I don't want to stop every time I come to a French word and look at the pronunciation guide. So what I need you to do is to just bear with me and maybe you can go if you ever get a copy of this book back and learn the right way to say these words. But I'm going to do my best. So let me hold up the book so you can see it too. On the day I was born, Papa announced me to the village. Here is my son, Louis. The neighbors came, locking their tongues, whispering, Too small, he won't survive. Oh, but I did survive. I was a curious child, and my eyes studied everything. Maman's gentle face, lace draping my cradle, the smooth shape of a bread loaf on the table. I grew strong and healthy. When I rode to the baker's on my brother's broad shoulders or fed the chickens with my sisters, the villagers waved and smiled. So handsome, they cried. And clever, too, my sister said. At three, I knew everyone in Coupre by name. I counted the eggs in my sister's basket and the sparrows in the trees. I repeated stories I heard word for word. See if I can move this a little bit closer so you can see it a little bit closer up. But what I loved most was to watch Papa work. People came from far away to have a harness made or a broken bridle mended. In Papa's hands, the rough leather strips became smooth and useful. I wanted to be just like him. But when I reached for a tool, Nai touche, Pa. Don't touch that, Papa warned. Then, more gently, You're too small yet, Louise. Wait till you're older. Too small, those words. I wanted to be bigger, stronger, older. Perhaps if I showed Papa what I could do. The leather was smooth. The owl was sharp. I knew just how to papa, papa, papa. He's using a very sharp tool that they use to work with leather, and it accidentally went into his eye. My life changed that day. A healer bandaged my eye. Again, I heard, I touche pas, don't touch. But the bandage itched so much. My hands, like the sparrows in the trees, were small and quick. I couldn't keep them away. I didn't mean to make things worse, but I did. The infection spread to my other eye until I could see nothing at all. No trees or sparrows. No faces. No lace or leaves of bread, loaves of bread. By the time I turned five, I was completely blind. The villagers whispered, Poor Louis Braille, such a clever boy. What will happen to him now? My world was dark and dangerous. I stumbled about the house, banging into the chairs, the walls, the door. My body ached. Where is the sun? I cried. But the sun did not come. I sat by the window, 
training my ears to do what my eyes could not. Clang, bang, kish, kish. That was Papa in his shop. Swoosh, swish, swoosh, swish. Long-skirted ladies hurrying to market. Clomp, 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 clomp. Soldiers marching down the street. Grr, grr, ruff, ruff, grr. The neighbor's angry dog chained too tight, alone in the dark. I knew just how he felt. My family did what they could. Papa made a wooden cane. Each day I walked a little farther. Tap, 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 counting the steps between the house and the garden. The vineyard and the chicken coop, the bakers and the millers, and back to Papa's shop. <coughs> My brother taught me to whistle. Wee, wee, wee. And when the sound echoed back, I, it warned me of things in my path. My sister made a straw alphabet. Papa made letters with leather strips, or by pounding round-topped nails into boards. With Mama, I played dominoes, counting the dots with my fingertips. The village priest taught me to recognize trees by their touch, flowers by their scent, and birds by their song. I listened closely as he read to me from the Bible and from books of poetry. Do you have books for blind children? I asked. No, Louis, the priest replied. I'm sorry. When I was older, I went to school with the other village children. All day, as they wrote down words and numbers or read out loud from printed pages, I sat in the front row, listening and memorizing. Do you have books for blind children? I asked again. No, Louis, the teacher replied. I'm sorry. But I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to read and to write on my own, like everyone else. The Marquis, a noble lady living nearby, heard about me. She wrote a letter to the Royal School for the Blind asking if I could study there. Finally, a reply came. Bonvenue! Welcome, Louis! The priest says they have books for the blind, I told Papa excitedly. But you're only ten, my mom cried. And you'll live there most of the year, my brother added. Paris is a big city far away, my sisters warned. How could I make them understand? Without books, I would always be poor Louis Braille. I would always be held back like that dog changed too tight. I love you, I told them, but I must go. I didn't need my eyes to know that the Royal School in Paris was not a palace. My hard bed was in a damp, crowded room. My uniform itched. My meals were small and cold. The teachers were strict. The older boys teased and stole. How I missed my home. And yet, I stayed. I stayed because somewhere in this old, moldy building, there were books for the blind. Only the best students are allowed to read them, my friend Gabriel told me. Then I will be one of the best, I replied. Learning at the blind school was almost like learning in Coupre. We sat and listened. We memorized and recited. We also had music lessons and made slippers in the workshop. As my fingers flew across the organ keys or between the strips of cloth, I dreamed of reading and writing. I worked and studied as hard as I could. Finally, it was that day. A guide led me to the library. Passez-vous ici? Sit here, he commanded. There was shuffling, grunting, and scraping. A thud. Viola! 
There it is, he said. Just trace the raised letters with your fingers. It was a long reach to the top of page one. My fingers traced the outline of each letter, just as I'd done in coupe with straw and leather. But these waxy letters were huge. After reading the first sentence this way, my hand was halfway down the page. A few sentences more, and I had to turn the page. A few more sentences, two more pages, and then the end. C'est tout? Is that all? I asked. There are more, the guide replied, but they're just like this one. Words as large as my hand, sentences that took up half a page, I sighed, even if I read a hundred books like this, how much could I learn? I skipped supper. I lay in bed wishing I was home. When I finally fell asleep, I dreamed that the neighbor's angry dog broke free. He ran to me, licking my face until I laughed and laughed. Louis, Louis, le toto, get up. Gabriel shook me awake. It was morning. The headmaster wants us. Let's go. Allons. Everyone had gathered in the big room. Dr. Pinier spoke. A French army captain has invented a code to send secret messages during battle. The code is read by touch, not by sight, so we might use it here, too. You're each holding a message written with patterns of thoughts, the headmaster continued. Each pattern stands for a sound such as oo or in or ch. We listened as he explained. It wasn't easy. There was a lot to remember. Flipping my paper over, I moved my fingers from left to right, feeling the dots. Fall back, I shouted. Everyone laughed. It was a battle order, of course, but now my heart pounded with hope. I asked for another. Again, I touched the dots. Supplies arrive at dawn. Oui, yes, the headmaster cried. The others shouted out their messages, too. How were the messages written, I asked. The headmaster handed me a slate, a wooden frame with a metal piece in the middle. Slide your paper underneath, he explained. Now take this stylus, but be careful. The sharp toll was like the awl in Papa's shop. I shivered. Use it to punch the code into the paper, he said. I made a few of the complicated dot patterns, then flipped the paper to read them by touch. For many weeks, I practiced. Reading by touch using dots was a brilliant idea, at least on the battlefield. But for us, the code was so hard that everyone else in the school had given up. Even a short message takes so many dots, and I can't fit a single symbol under my finger, I complained to Gabriel. Plus, the captain's code stands for sounds, not for letters. So what? my friend replied. So why shouldn't we spell words and write sentences like sighted people do, I argued. This code was a start, but it wasn't nearly good enough. We, the blind, were still held back. Would the captain work on improving it with me? I asked the headmaster. I'm sorry, Louis. He isn't interested, he replied. Sorry, that word. Long ago, I had watched Papa take rough leather strips and make them useful. Now I knew what I had to do. Late at night, while the others slept, I bent over my slate and punched the pages. I tried hundreds of ways to simplify the captain's code. I worked until my back was stiff and my fingers ached. Often I fell asleep a few minutes before morning. A year passed, then another, and another. That winter, I turned 15. I was often sick, but I wouldn't rest. Finally, it was ready to test. I asked the headmaster to choose something from his own library, a book I'd never heard of before. Please read it out loud, I said. Dr. Pinier began. After a few minutes, I interrupted. You can go much faster, sir. 
As he read, I copied down the words, spelling each one correctly. My new code used just six dots, arranged in two columns like dominoes. Each dot pattern stood for a letter of the alphabet. Fini, said Dr. Pinay when he reached the end of chapter one. Finished. I turned my pages over. Reading by touch, I recited the entire chapter. Dewey to la feet. You did it, he shouted. Word spread quickly. The other students rushed to try it. So facile, so easy, et si vite, and so fast. We can read words and write letters like everyone else. As my friends traded messages, I remembered watching Papa in his shop bent over rough strips of leather, making them useful. I had become like him after all. And then there is an author's note. If I asked you to make a list of great inventors, who would be on that list? Gutenberg, Da Vinci, Edison? Then there are Bell, Franklin, Marconi, Tesla, Carver, Whitney, Hopper. Just a sampling of more names you might consider based on the number, kind, and overall impact of their creations. But do you know that nearly every day, whenever you're in a school, restaurant, hotel, elevator, bank, or other public space, the invention of a teenager is there too? The name Braille deserves to be on everyone's list of great inventors. Just like these others, he recognized a rough idea, a fingertip code used on battlefields, and worked exhaustively to shape it into something that changed the world forever. Unlike those other inventors, however, Braille was a child inventor who worked alone and without public support or financial backing. Living in a converted prison building and already suffering the early signs of lung disease, Lewis Braille managed to create a system of reading and writing for the blind that is still used today. In the past several centuries, no one so young has developed something that has had such a lasting and profound impact on so many people. This is my second book about Lewis Braille. In 1994, my young adult biography of Braille was published as part of the series Great Achievers, Lives of the Physically Challenged. The book was designed to inform, and it did so well enough, I think, but more recently, I encountered examples of the Braille alphabet in public libraries and on college campuses, in airports and on ATMs. I asked myself, what did it feel like to be Louis Braille? Nothing I'd read about the young Frenchman, including my own account, had led me to experience Braille's emotions. What was it like to be Louis Braille? This story is my attempt to answer these questions. And then it tells you more about Lewis Braille in the back, which we are not going to read all of this, but if you are interested in getting the book Six Dots from your local library, this one is from Shaler, but you know you can request any book at any time on the computer and it will be placed on hold for you, and it will come from any of the libraries in Allegheny County that have a copy. So it's just a matter of waiting for it to come, even if Shaler's copy was checked out or if it's a book that you know we don't have at our library. And on the inside, it shows you the Braille alphabet, shows you how to make a capital letter. The capital sign placed before a letter makes it a capital letter. And then the number sign placed before the letters A through J make the numbers 1 through 9 and 0, it says. That's on that page. And then on the other page, nope, I thought it was going to show us what's on this page here. But it's kind of covered up, so we can't read it. I think it's a quote about Lewis Braille written in Braille. So that is six dots. Now, if you were able to print out the packet that goes along with it, 
there are some activities we can do together. One of them is making a device like they used in the book, and it's pictured on the back here, so that you can make your own Braille letters. And I made one. I didn't quite understand, to tell you the truth, what this lady was talking about when she talked about a basket that she cut off the side of. So I just made my own frame like that out of a piece of black construction paper. So you could do something like that too, even if you don't have a basket like she has pictured there. And then I taped it to a piece of cardboard and I'm taking a piece of white paper and just sliding it in behind it. And then you can open up um, your computer if you have a computer that you can look at and look at the Braille alphabet and make a message based on how many dots you get and where the dot is in each letter. So you would just punch some holes, like if I want to write the letter, the word Braille, I have to do two dots for a B, and I'm going to do four dots in a certain pattern for R. I think I should have started at the end because I'm going to run out of letters here. A is one dot, just like a B was two dots, this is one dot. B R A I is two dots in a different location. L is three dots going straight up. And that's all I'm going to do right now, just to give you a sample. Watch when you are poking through that you don't poke yourself. And then you can take it out, they said, and turn it over. And you'll be able to feel the dots and read your own Braille writing. So you can write messages to friends and things too. Okay, so that was one activity. And then we have the types of food Braille activity booklet. And that booklet printed out with three different pages, I think it is. My Braille booklet. And if you take the page that looks like that, it gives you a sample of the alphabet on each side. And you put it behind this page, or you can run it off if you have a copy machine, you can run it off double sided. And then you take this other sheet and you put it like that. And we're going to fold, whoopsie. Mrs. Coltis is getting, Miss Kathy is getting goofed up here. We have this and this. So this is going to be on the outside. This is going to be on the inside. So we have this. And on the back of that, we have the questions, and then inside this we have the alphabet. And when you fold those and make a booklet, you can now pretend this is double-sided and turn this sheet over, and it's asking you to figure out what type of food those are spelling out. So you have to look at the alphabet over here. We have dots in that certain pattern like that. And we have to find the letter that matches that. So the letter that matches that is a T. T has those four dots, so I'm going to write a T in this spot. We have one singular dot up at the corner. I already did that on my other sheet, so I know that's an A. got two dots across the top. It doesn't take long to find that one. That one is a C. And these are all going to be lowercase letters because none of them have that symbol in front of it to make it a capital. And then three dots in that pattern 
is going to be an O. So the first word they asked us to find was taco. And you can go through and find all the other words, the four different types of food. And then when you turn those two pages over, you can do it again with four more types of food. I'm curious about this one at the bottom. It says one, two, three, four dots in that pattern. That's a P. And those two dots like that is a B. Oh, and there's an AND symbol. And this one is a J, P, B, and J. I thought, what word is so short? and has an and symbol in it, but it's peanut butter and jelly. And then on the back, it says you practice the name of your favorite food using sign language. So you have to look back on the chart inside or on a computer if you pull one up or in your book. And I see what a G is, and I'm going to fill in the dots to make a G. And you can do this with all the letters and spell out the words. Okay, so that can be your Braille booklet about food. And then we had some activities. If you go to this website, and I gave you the site, would you like to see a word in Braille? So you can type in the word that you are thinking of. And it will show you what it looks like in Braille. I typed in Shaler North Hills Library. So going across this top line says Shaler North Hills. And on the bottom line, it says Library. And then down here, I typed in my name. So you can type in your name. All you got to do is type in whatever word you want there, and it'll show you what it looks like in Braille. And on the bottom of this page, I have printed out the site for that, but it's also on the sheet that goes right at the beginning. Six Dots, a story of young Lewis Braille activities page. That sheet is on there. Okay, that was one other activity. Just showing you the Unified English Braille chart, so you have a copy of all the different Braille symbols. And let's see if there's anything else. Here's another symbol chart. And pages of other activities you might want to try. And this sheet here continued the websites that you can go to, showing you a bunch of different fun games and things you can do online about Lewis Braille. And there's a brief video to watch a little bit about his life. All kinds of cool stuff you can do to further your Braille activity. But figure out all the types of food that are on this sheet and in your booklet. And what was our first one? Oh, the activity with the punching out and making your own braille letters. So that should give you some things to practice with. And just try to imagine another easy way to pretend you're Lewis Braille or any blind person is to shut your eyes and try to move around without your eyes open and see how hard it really is. How to give blind people a lot of credit for all that they do. Okay, I hope you have learned something about Lewis Braille and that you'll check out some of these other websites that are super cool about Braille and all that they can uh, do for fun games and things with the Braille system. And I hope you join me next time for another STEAM book about somebody important, and some activities to go along with it. So thanks for watching this time. This has been Miss Kathy from Shaler North Hills Library. Bye.